Hello, 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 everybody. It's your boy, JP, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the JP Show. I am your host, JP. I want to just apologize real quick for the music. I have a little music malfunction going on today, so I don't really have time to fix it. So I'm just going to go on with the show, and I'll work on the music on the next time. So I apologize about the music. But welcome everybody to the JP Show. Yes, yes, yes. We're back, we're back, we're back. It's Tuesday. I'm here. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. I'm ready to get it on, baby. Get it on, get it on, get it on. Let's go. So I got some, I got some topics, you know. I got get it off your chest. I got a lot of stuff that you know, I want to talk about in this episode of the JP show. So let's basically just get right into it. You heard? So on Get It Off Your Chest, um, let's just start off with, um, I, I explained to you guys last week that um, I have kidney disease and um, a couple of weeks ago I got called for, um, I got called for a kidney transplant surgery which I have the kidney is right here in my abdomen area uh, so let's just go in a little bit we're gonna take too much time on this but let's just go in a little bit on the recovery um, phase so right now I'm in recovery um, I've been out the hospital since not this Sunday but the following Sunday and um, Actually, I've actually kind of recovered pretty well and pretty fast. I don't know if it's because of my age or what it is. Or now remember, I don't know if I told you this, but I actually received a perfect match kidney. So the guy, excuse me, the guy that passed away, he's a perfect match for me. Um, so it could be that. Uh, but I'm actually recovering pretty, pretty fast. Um, a lot of the doctors and the nurses is like amazed how fast I'm recovering. Um, even the first day, even the first day out of surgery, I was like walking around and on my own, like with no help. I was, and you know, if you ever had surgery, um, it's pretty tough that day after surgery. And so I was walking around by myself and getting out of bed by myself and pretty much doing everything by myself. I've always been kind of like self-sufficient anyway. So it really doesn't it really doesn't surprise me that, you know, my progress is moving pretty fast or whatever. Um, I'm very thankful and I'm very happy for that, that everything is going good with the recovery. Um, I will say that um, I'm taking... 50 pills believe it or not i'm taking 50 pills per day about i would say about 50 pills per day some medication i don't take at night that i take in the morning or whatever but it's about 50 pills per day so it's a lot it's a lot it's a lot of it's a lot of pills and some of those pills actually you know does different things to you so i got one pill that makes me urinate all the time and all day then i got another pill that makes me defecate and gives me diarrhea then i got another pill that makes me sleepy as heck and i got another pill that gives me insomnia so they some of these pills they're all just all over the place and they do certain things to you or whatever that's why we have doctors and things like that. So they take your blood tests and they look, you know, in your blood and they see what's going on. And they could tell you, um, you know, instead of taking four of these pills, take two of these, you know, now since you, you're going through this and you got diarrhea or whatever. So don't take four of these, take two of these and, you know, different things like that. So that's the beautiful thing about this whole situation. Another thing that I didn't tell y'all last week is that while I was in surgery, the doctor, not only did they put a tube in my dick, remember I told you last week, they put a tube in the hole of my dick. Not only did they do that, but they also put a stent 
inside of my dick. Do you hear me? They also put a stint inside my dick. Like, I don't even think they gave me the kidney, to be honest. I think they just worked on my dick. Because when I got up, <laughs> when I got up from surgery, I was all clean shaved down there. I'm like, damn, who the, what, did I have sex while I was under anesthesia or something? I was clean as a freaking newborn baby down there. So they shaved me up. Then they put a, 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 a tube on my dick. And then they also put a stick inside of my dick. So... Next Friday, I got to go through the agony and the pain of going through a urologist so he can stick something inside of my dick to get that stent out of my dick, which, you know, I'm not happy about. The next time I go through some type of surgery, I'm going to tell him, don't fuck with my dick. God, why do y'all have to do this? Why do you got to touch my dick? Like, like, literally, I've had so much, like, they have did so much stuff to my dick, I don't even think that they even touched me, touched my, you know, my kidney. It's just all about my dick. Like, leave it alone. I know you probably, I know the doctor's probably looking like, fuck, man, I hate black people, they always got big dicks, but goddamn, leave my shit alone. Oh, my gosh, it's driving me crazy. I, everything that I'm doing after surgery is all on my dick. <laughs> Literally, it's all about my dick. Everything that I, I, everything that um, recovering from surgery and after surgery and doing everything I got to do, it's been nothing about the kidney. Every time I got to go in, it's like, oh, we need to take this out of your dick. Oh, we got to do this to your dick. Oh, we got... <sighs> Did you even give me the kidney? That's what I'm wondering now. Did you even give me the kidney? Fuck. I'm sick of it, man. I'm sick of it. I never had, even in a relationship, I never had this much, you know, situation going on with my dick. I never had females just constantly touching my dick. Like, like, like these doctors is just like hovering over my dick. Damn. Uh, next time, matter of fact, I gotta go. I went to I went to the doctor today. I gotta go back on Thursday. I'm gonna seriously ask the doctor, did you guys give me kidney surgery or did you give me dick surgery? Which one did you give me? Because you're constantly working on my dick. Damn! But I'm blessed, I'm happy. You know I'm just joking. I'm just having a good time. But I'm blessed, I'm happy. Um the kidney is working well. They're looking at my numbers. Everything is coming down and going up, wherever, however they need it to be. Everything is on a good, good road. And I'm super, super happy, super blessed, super thankful, thankful, thankful that I don't have to go through dialysis no more. I don't have to go through all the struggles of the pain and not feeling well and not having energy and, you know, just being down, down, down. I don't have to go through that no more. Since I've been out, since I've been recovering and I've been out of um, out the hospital, I've I've I haven't had that I haven't had that feeling of not feeling good, being tired, you know what I mean, like aches and pains. My feet used to hurt like hell. I never had I haven't had any of that since I've been out, and I'm just super super thankful, super happy for that, super blessed for that, and I'm telling you guys. I got a lot of friends and they do a lot of drugs and they smoke a lot of this and they they drink a lot. You know what I mean? I mean a lot. Drink a lot. And I just want to tell y'all, like, it's, it's my duty at this point because of what I went through. It's my duty to tell you guys to, you have to slow down on the alcohol, slow down on the drugs, and you really have to work on your body and work on your health now also i just want to let you know just because you're the fittest person in the room that doesn't mean that you can't catch something or you can't get something because a lot of these diseases sometimes are hereditary like mine is hereditary so even though i was the health i was healthy or whatever it was it was it's, it's in my family 
You know what I'm saying? So I just want to tell, I just want to tell um, you guys that no matter what, go to the doctor. When you go to the doctor, ask the doctor to check everything. Check your brain, check your lungs, check your heart, check your liver, your pancreas, check your spleen, check everything, your kidneys. Check every single thing. Do everything. Blood tests, urine tests, everything. Because sometimes doctors misdiagnose you. You know what I'm saying? And I've had that happen to me before. So just make sure when you go to the doctor, blood, blood and urine tests, and everything. Check every organ in your body to make sure that, you know, you're healthy and you're good. You know what I mean? So... Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you, thank you guys for listening to me and listening to my story. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I've been feeling the love out here, so I'm grateful and I'm thankful for everything. All right, so let's get into my second topic on get it off your chest. So check this out, right? I don't know where you guys are living at, but where I'm living at is in the New York area. Do you guys ever feel like, 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 I feel like, like, for some reason, minivans and work vans are the most treacherous drivers in the history of driving. Like, when I'm out on the, on the road, on the highway, yo, I don't know who's driving these minivans, but the minivans is just rampaging all over the highway and the road. You know what I think it is? This is what I think it is. I think that it's a female that probably bought the minivan because she got kids, but she's letting her boyfriend or her boo thing um, occupy the minivan. So you probably got young dudes or 30 something year old dudes, you know, driving these minivans. And they're driving them like they're a freaking Corvette. I mean, a hundred miles per hour, miles per hour, just you know, cutting in front of people, switching lanes back and forth, right to left, left to right. Just boom. man, listen. I have so many minivans that cut me off on a day to day basis. It is mind blowing. And I'm like, who in the hell? When I was growing up. We didn't have minivans, but we had like station wagons or whatever. A lot of y'all who was my age probably will remember the, the big station. The station wagons didn't, you couldn't drive a station wagon like this. I guess the minivans now, they got more speed or whatever. But you couldn't drive a minivan like, I mean, a station wagon like that. A station wagon was just like to get you to point A to point B. And it didn't go very fast. But these dudes or whoever's driving these minivans... And the work vans, uh, I mean work vans, and it, it actually has a number on the back of the van that tells you if I'm not driving that good, call this number. So you basically, I guess you're calling the person supervisor or whatever, and and they still be driving these van, these work vans or work trucks, like 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 speeding and just man, I had a work van cut me off. Matter of fact. I'm driving in the right lane, he's in the middle lane, and I'm just driving, 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 and the dude is literally just coming over in my lane and about to just rampage me off the freaking highway. And I'm just like, I had to beat my horn like 10 times. Dude, watch where you go and you driving reckless and crazy. You driving crazy. And a lot of times, a lot of these minivans and work vans, they don't like if it, 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 they don't like for you to like to speed past them or cut in front of them for whatever reason. They do. You're driving a minivan. Sometimes I can't even see in front of me because this big ass minivan. So I gotta get in front of you or I gotta get on the side of you or whatever. So they start acting up when you do stuff like that. Listen to all the minivans, to all the work vans. Listen. If you're 30 years old and you're driving a minivan, you're a guy, and, 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 and these ain't, you ain't even got kids, these ain't even your kids or whatever, like, go slap yourself. Get some ambition, 
Listen, I've been driving since I was 18 years old. I've had at least about six, seven cars by now. Get some ambition. Get a job. Go freaking find a way to get your own vehicle. If you want to drive like a bat out of hell, go get a Corvette. Go get a Ferrari. Go get a freaking 350Z, 370Z. Go get something fast where you can freaking drive like a bat out of hell. But driving these minivans around and driving them like 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 you're fucking Batman. Come on, dogs. Y'all bug. And I know it's dudes. It is dudes that's driving these vans like this. I'm just like, I hope there's no kids in the in the in the vehicle. Cause this is just crazy. Let me know, guys. Do you see? Am I crazy? Is it me that that that's crazy? That you know, when I'm out on the road and the minivans and the work vans is driving. Let me know who you who y'all think are the crazy car drivers. Is it minivans? Is it work vans? Is it sedans? Who do you think? Because me, I'm seeing a lot of minivan trash drivers, and I'm sick of it. Like I literally sometimes just pull over on the side of the of the road and then, and in New York what they do is they drive right on your ass. You know when in, in driver's ed you was taught that you need this you need to be able to see the um the the back wheels of the person in front of you. So you need to be you need to be at a distance where you can see their back wheels. Not here, not here. Let me tell you. They drive Listen, I mean, you would think that the, the person is like you carrying them on your back because they are right up on your bumper. I mean, completely. They can't see your back wheels or anything. So sometimes I literally have to pull over on the side of the highway or on the side of the street and let them go. And once they go, I get behind them and I drive correctly because... If I stop on the dime real quick or, you know, things happen when you're driving in, whatever. If I have to stop real quick or stop on the dime or I have to make a quick turn, you're going to hit me right in the back because you're, you're not supposed to be driving on my bumper like that. You know what I'm saying? It's dangerous. That's very, very dangerous. But let me know, guys, who you think is the crazy, crazy, which cars, which vehicles are the crazy vehicle drivers because... For me, it's the minivans and the work vans. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, in the NBA. What about this going on in the NBA? The fans. The fans is going crazy right now. They're, they're, they're spitting. Listen, we all know about that spitting stuff. You know, you know what's the easiest way to get killed? And I hate to say this, but the easiest way to get murk is spit on somebody. I would never, even if I hate the person, which I don't hate nobody, but even if I hated the person that 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 or uh, whatever person, I would never ever spit on them. Because I remember one time when I was a kid, maybe about Maybe I was about 10, maybe 11, maybe 11, 12. I had spit on one of my neighbors and trying to be, you know, trying to be tough guy or whatever. And I spit on him. And when I tell you he beat my ass, like literally, the dude beat my ass so bad. I was trying to stick in there, but he was so turned up and so upset it was nothing that I could do with him. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, he kicked my ass. I would never, ever, ever, ever spit on a human being ever again. But in the NBA, the fans, they're spitting on players. They're throwing bottles at players. That one dude, he threw popcorn on Russell Westbrook's head. Just threw a whole bucket of popcorn. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you... I, yo, and you know how much that damn popcorn costs inside those stadiums? That shit is expensive. One bag of popcorn is like ten dollars, and you threw your whole bag of popcorn on Russell Westbrook head. Man, listen, these these fans is bugging right now because 
If they seen Russell Westbrook on the street, you think that do you think the fans were throwing popcorn on his head in the middle of the street? Be honest. Do you think that the fan would throw popcorn on Russell Westbrook's head in the middle of the street? Or throw a bottle at him? They've been spitting. And remember, we just got the fans back into the into the arena. They just got back. So they're spitting on people. They're um they're they're they're, they're throwing bottles. One guy threw a bottle at Kyrie, almost um almost hit him in the head. And this is coming from a, a distance. He's sitting in the stands or whatever. He's not that far up, but he's sitting like mid level. And he threw the bottle down and Kyrie, you know a bottle coming from that type of distance, that that could hurt. You know what I'm saying? That could take you out. So I don't know what's going on with the fans. You just got back in the arena. You don't want the NBA to close the arena down because y'all doing too much. And so let's just go back to where it was, you know, in the bubble where we had no fans so we could get through this playoff. You don't want the NBA to do that. Stop it. Stop being abusive to the players. Stop throwing bottles. Stop spitting. Stop throwing popcorn. You better eat that damn popcorn. Our popcorn is expensive. I ain't throwing my popcorn on nobody here. I'm throwing my popcorn on right here. I ain't throwing... What? What? I don't mean to sound cheap, but no. No, no, no. I ain't throwing my popcorn on nobody. I'm eating my popcorn. So... The NBA got a serious problem. What they could do, what I feel like they should do, is if you th if you insult a player, throw popcorn on a player, or whatever, throw some type of some type of instrument on the player, then you should be persecuted, prosecuted in the courts. Uh, of course, they're not going to give you no 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 serious jail time for that. But you should um, have to do like community service. First of all, you get banned for every stadium that's in your city. So if you got, just say like in this area, we got the Nets, um, Brooklyn. We got the Knicks. That's in the city. That's in Manhattan. We have... Um, we have the Giants and the Jets Stadium. You get banned from all, all the arenas. You don't get to go to no football games. You don't get to go to no basketball games. And you don't get to go to no hockey games. You go to no games at all, period. Not even ba Oh, yeah, baseball. We got um, Shea Stadium and Yankee. Oh, it's not Shea no more. City Field. Is it City? I think City Field and... and um, and and and, and 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 Yankee Stadium. So if you if you turn up, you get banned from all the stadiums. Not only that, but you got to do a year's worth of community service. That'll stop them. That'll stop them. Let's say like let's say like five hundred. Let's say a thousand hours. Like hit them with something over the top. A thousand hours. You be doing a thousand hours for years. That'll, that'll, that'll make you think about, first of all, you're going to get prosecuted. You're going to do a thousand hours community service and you go to absolutely, you, you can't even take your kid to a game. If you're married or whatever, you got a girlfriend, the girlfriend got to take the kids to the game. You can't go. Yeah. That'll make people think about, think about, you know, what they've been doing. So let's see what else we got on the list. Let's get into some of these topics. So, I was on Instagram the other day, and I seen, what's this guy's name? Um, Cam Newton. He was talking about his, his daughter. He said he had a conversation with his daughter, and he told his daughter, like, listen, um, when, you, when you get old enough, um, to go out on a date, let me ask you a question. Who's going to pay for the first date? And so, make a long story short, 
he was telling her, I want you to have your own money. How about you pay for the first date? Have your own money where you don't have to rely on a guy um, to, to, to pay for you or whatever, to pay for, you know, your dates or whatever the case is. You can, you can pay for the date, you know, between you and, and your party. You know what I'm saying? And so he said, uh, he asked the question, like, whose responsibility is it to pay for the first date? And so he was saying how, you know, most of the women that he was talking to was saying that um, whoever, whoever asks to take the person out should pay for the first date. So Cam Newton said, um, that sounds ridiculous because when have you ever known a woman to ask a guy out on a date? When have you ever known a woman to just walk up to a guy and give the, give the guy her number? Which he has valid points. I personally don't think it's up to a man to pay for the first date. And I definitely don't think it's up to whoever asks to take the person out on the first date. Like that's ridiculous because... 99% of guys always have to ask the girl because the girl does absolutely nothing. They don't talk to you. They won't come up. They will not come up and make conversation with you. They'll look at you all day. They will stare your fucking head into a, a freaking ground. But they won't say nothing to you. They're not going to come up to you and, and approach you, talk to you, uh, flirt with you, give you their number. They're not going to do any of that. So everything is the, the reason why most women are with a guy, reason why most women are married or whatever the case is, or they've been in a long term relationship or they have a boyfriend. They just newly got a boyfriend is because the guy approached the girl because he had no choice because the girl is not going to do anything. And some of that is because women have that fairy tale. First of all, I just want to say in America, I don't know about in other countries, but in America, we have been brainwashed for so many years to think and act and approach things in a certain type of way. So a lot of women are very much brainwashed in America to think that, that this is the way that it's supposed to go. Now they want to call that tradition, which is to me is not tradition. It's you being brainwashed. Now, in every form of life that we're going through in 2021, women are progressing and they're moving and shaking and they're fast forwarding, you know, their culture, the culture, I should say. They're fast forwarding things. They're making women open their minds and move forward. If it's work, whatever the case is, they're fast forwarding things, but not in the dating scene. In the dating scene, they're... They're reverting back. And I don't even want to say reverting back. They're just back. They're just, they haven't came out of that old school mentality where they think that the guy has to do everything for them and they do nothing. And this is how you're going to get me. And in today's time, men are changing. That's the big thing. That's the big thing that I just said. Listen to me one, one more time. In this day and in this era, in this age, 2021, men, not women, men are changing. And I'm going to bust this down for you. What it is is that men don't want to take your hungry ass out no more. Real talk. Imagine this, ladies. Check this out. Imagine this. You, got, you guys don't have to do this. Imagine, let's say me, for example. I've been taking women out since I was 15 years old. 15. I'm 38 now. So that's about 23 years. So tw let's say 23 years I've been going on dates for 23 years. Imagine that. Imagine that, women. Now, maybe women, you've been going on dates for a long time too, 
but you haven't been the the aggressor. You haven't had to ask a man out on a date for 23 years. I've had to ask, approach, make conversation, entertain these girls for 23 years. Do you know how tiring that is? And 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 also, you got nothing to show for it. I'm not married. I'm not in a relationship. I'm not engaged. I'm not anything. So for 23 years, I've been taking women out on dates and this and that and being a gentleman. They always say, oh, there's no more being a gentleman and doing all this type of stuff. And you got nothing to show for it. So men are to a point now where they're like, and women, y'all really need to listen up and y'all need to study this shit. Men are to a point now where they're like, yo, I've been doing this for so long. I got nothing to show for it. I don't really care to take you out on a date. That's why you see in dudes, it's like, no dude want to go out on a date. It's real facts. No guy wants to go out on a date with, with no female. Like, guys is like, yo, we can meet, we can chat, maybe we go to the bar, whatever the case is, or, or we just hang out. But I ain't trying to go on no official, traditional, brainwashed date. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, is women, is that you guys got to get out of the brainwash. A guy, to, a guy don't have to ask you out for you to, to get to know him. You can ask the guy out. This is a new day. Your grandmother and great grandmother, that was back in their day in the 50s. If we're still on the 50s time in 2021, there's a problem. There's a serious, serious problem. That was like 70 years ago. Your grandmother, or whatever, 1950. They had, they did things a certain way back there, and that was their era of how they approached things. This is 2021. You you could call a guy. The guy doesn't have to call you first. You could call him. You can approach him. You can talk to him. You can freak in, and you won't look. Pardon me. You won't look any type of way unless that's in your brain because you've been brainwashed. That's in your brain. Let me tell you something. There's no difference between a man and a woman. There's no difference between us. We're men. Yes, I have certain capabilities that you don't have, but I'm a man. You're a woman. In the mental space, I don't see no difference between me asking you out on a date and you asking me out on a date. I don't see no difference in that. You know what I'm saying? If you ask me, if I ask you out on a date and you say no... Or you got a man, that's just what it is. If you ask me out on a date and I say no and I got a girl, that's just what it is. It ain't what what's the difference? You don't look sleazy, you don't look thirsty, you don't look anything. You look like a person that know what you want and you going for what you want. You do that in every, women do that in every every situation that they in. Every situation, whether it's work. Whatever the case is, they see something that they like, they want to go for this. Oh, if it's if it's if it's a, a a bag or shopping, they see something that they want. Oh, I want that. Oh, they go get it. You know what I'm saying? Or they call they do. Huh, could you buy me this? Like, come on. You could do whatever you want to do, ladies. You could do whatever, 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 whatever you want to do. You don't need to be brainwashed, you don't need to say, oh, I'm traditional. You're not traditional. You're dumb. That's what you are. You're dumb. Because that's dumb. You know what I'm saying? Be yourself. Like, that's the problem that we're having with women in America. Is that all the women are the same. And they're acting the same. And they're doing the same damn things. Like, you don't have to do the same thing. Be the same way. Be yourself now there's some women that maybe is petrified to talk to a guy or whatever you need to kind of like grow and kind of like get over that 